obtuse. There is no Irish creation myth that survives to our time. But the storytellers of early Ireland created an Din Hanahas to explain why they had named the landscape and what had happened there. The goddess Eru, before she disappeared into the earth at Ishnar, told Amergen to name the country after her. The goddesses Shunan, Boan, Bridge, Anu, Anya, and many others give their names to lakes, rivers, mountains. The great Kalya who flew over Loch Crew dropped the stones out of her apron. They landed on the hills there, creating the megalithic cairns of Loch Crew. Lu and Balar's primordial battle in the north of the country created Loch Vey and Glan Yiva, the poison glen. Saint Fimbar, when he went to Gugambara, banished a great pasht or water monster. And as it left, it carved the River Lee all the way to Cork Harbour. Kilcha Macronan was the last of the Fianna and he journeyed around Ireland with St. Patrick telling him all he could remember about what had happened in the landscape why they had given it those names and all of it was written down and passed through a hundred generations The mythological Fenian, Ulster, and King Cycles, and many other stories still are with us today. And around 500 years ago, relatively recently, a new story was composed Actra Connell Gullibin. The Adventure of Conal Goldman. We have it today as young Conal of Hoth, Conal Og of Vinyadr, Vinyadr, Hoth. Hoth was where Finn Macul and the Fianna had their base, one of them anyway, where Jermud and Grania hid and where Deirdre of the Sorrows and the Sons of Ishlu sheltered before they fled across the sea, away from Croher Magnasa and the Red Branch Knights. Vi sin annagus is father vi, mar vi mock rear erin daravanyu conal.
Con log of Vinyether, young Connell of Hoth. There was a great assembly on the hill of Hoth. It happened once a year, and all the kings came from all over Ireland. And there was the king of Hoth himself, Nile, Nile of the Nine Hostages, Neil Nihila. And he had three sons. The oldest was Liri, or Lyra, who gives his name to Dun Lyra. Dunleary. Then there was Owen, or Owen, who gives his name to Chir Owen, Tyrone. And then there was Connell, who gives his name to Chir Connell, Donegal. They were making laws, making decisions, talking a lot. What were they talking about? And on and on at a round table for a long period of time. And a messenger came from a faraway land and he asked King Nile and two of his sons to come with him to help defeat a great foe in a faraway land. And they said, we'll do that, but we must leave young Connell in charge. And so Connell became the King of Hoth, young Connell of Hoth. Viga mai agus hawk. Time went by and Connell was happy enough as king, the temp, and he decided he wanted to marry. So he went to the Druid, and if he did, he asked the Druid, who is the most beautiful woman in Ireland? And the Druid said, I don't know right off, but I'll check my books and I'll get back to you. And so he did, and he came back. I told Connell, Connell, the most beautiful woman in Ireland is Ethna, the daughter of the King of Ulster. And Connell said, well, so I'll set off for Ulster immediately. This took a little while. They didn't have any trains or buses or cars back then. So he set off on his horse. And soon enough, he made it to the outskirts of the castle of the King of Ulster. And he made some inquiries. And he met a farmer nearby, and the farmer to give him a very good account of Ethna, and said she was fair to rich and poor, all people, animals too. So he decided to find out where she was, and he found out that the king kept her in a high room, a sun room at the very top of the castle, away from people like Connell. Kings did that a lot, it seems, in these stories. So he went snooping around, and he was looking up. He located the room, and he was looking up at it. And Ethna was in the room with 12 maids. So one of the maids looked down and saw him looking up, and she said to Ethna, There's a fine young man down there looking up here. And I think he's looking for you. The only thing is, he's very small. And Ethan said, well, that's no great fault. She went to the window and she looked down. And she invited him up. And she said, oh, we'll even tie together blankets and sheets and other things to make a rope for you. Connell was having none of it. He jumped up onto the wall and climbed up and was in the window in a flash. And then they went and sat by the fire talking for that whole day. Then he went away and he came back the next day and it was the same by the fire. Then he went away and he came back the next day and it was the same by the fire. And the name for that room is a beautiful name. It's called Angriyanan.
so it was kind of romantic. And it went very well. So well, in fact, that after three days, they decided they'd get married. And not only that, but they decided they would elope. They would run away together. And on the morning of the fourth day, that's just what they did. They got up before dawn and rode away on two horses. Ethna was convinced that her father would not approve. But they weren't far out the road when Connell had a flash of conscience. And he said, no, we can't do this. We'll have to turn around and go back because if I can't win you fair and square, then I can't have you at all. I won't have it said of me that Connell, the son of the King of Hoth, stole Ethna, the daughter of the King of Ulster. That just won't do. So Connell stood at the green in the front of the castle and he hit the challenge pole. This was a pole that warriors would hit to summon all the other warriors from the castle to fight one by one. And this is what happened. And then he fought eventually the king himself.
Connell beat everyone. <laughs> and he also defeated the king, put him on the ground, but he spared his life. And Connell and the king said, Connell, you have bested me. Now you may marry my daughter. And there was a great wedding feast for seven days and seven nights. Each night wilder than the last. Seven days and seven nights is pretty good for a wedding. You'd be pretty tired at the end. And on the eighth day, everyone had had enough and Connell and Ethna were married. And everyone went home. including Connell and Ethna, who set out on the road back to Hoth on their horses. And they were about three quarters of the way back to Hoth when Connell started to feel very, very tired. And he said, Ethna, I feel very, very tired. Ethna said, don't go to sleep yet, because if you do, you will fall into the warrior's sleep for seven days and seven nights, and we will not be able to wake you. Nothing we can do. We could kick you, bite you, burn you, drown you you will not wake. Already Connell was lying on the ground, falling fast asleep. Here's where things start to go a little bit wrong. It's quite a happy story up until then.
to steal the daughter of the king of Ulster, Ethna. And then he spotted her. Tatu and Shen. her up and he threw her into the basket on his back and they were about to turn around and walk away through the sea when she put him under obligation an old Irish way and these were things that he had to do one he couldn't lay a finger on her for a year and a day and second he had to make a mark on the ground and write who he was, where he was from, and where they were bound for. And he did all this. And then they turned around and walked off through the sea towards the eastern world. of more lesh in a wart la fun is that conal gulban it drew her vainer a hail of her fud and doan conal woke up he walked to the shore of hoth and it was said that there would always be a boat waiting 
for an Irishman in need on the shore of the Hill of Hoth. And there was. But it wasn't a great boat now, and he had to do a bit of work on it. And he had to enlist some local cowherds and get their cows and take the skins off them and put them around the boat. And he had to get hammers and nails, and he had to do all kinds of stuff. Then finally, the boat was ready. He put it on the sea, and he set sail for the Eastern world.
and stopping in a couple of islands along the way. Connell gathered the help of some assistants, some warriors, another druid, an Irishman who was very good at tying people up, apparently, and a knight who had fought a great winged griffin and escaped and boasted about it and who had also witnessed walking to the sea Mark of Moore with Ethna on his back. All these people came with Connell until finally he set foot on the shore of the land where Mark of Moore was the king and he quickly located the castle where Ethna was being held. understanding as to whose wife Ethna actually was. <laughs> but instead, for three days and three nights, they joined in fearsome battle.
Connell won. In some versions of the story, he kills the giant. But in the original version, he just ties him up. And then the, the giant says, can I join you, Connell? Can I join your gang? And now that I don't have a wife, will you find me a wife? But sorry, in this version of the story, he dies. Hope you're okay with that. Life is tough. Especially if you're a kidnapping giant from the Eastern world. So young Connell of Hoth defeated Mark of Moore the Giant and reclaimed his beloved Ethna. And they got into the ship and headed back. But they had one stop along the way. You might remember King Nile, his father, and his two brothers, Leary and Owen. Well, they had to stop in on an island there and first fight against the brothers who didn't recognize them. And then Connell beat them and then they recognized, oh, this is our brother Connell. And then Connell helped them defeat their great foe. And then they all got back into the ship together and sailed back for Hoth. Thank you.